Travolting presents The Fraser's Edge. Hosted by Jeff Sweeney and Stuart Elmore. Covering a whole lot of soul. Enjoy the episode. Oi, cracky, my lads. How you doing? That's all right. You're welcome back to this revolting Jesus presents the Fraser's Edge. Christ. We're covering this episode on the whole lot of soul. Jeff. It's a film set in the Jeff. <laughs> Belfast, Northern Ireland. Jeff. <laughs> the main, <laughs> the, the, Stop. The main flashpoint no. of the troubles. <laughs> That's right, laddies. Take up arms. We're taking out the Brits. <laughs> Oh my god. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? You want some of me lucky charms? <laughs> Why? Why would you do that? Why would I do what? Why? Why would I do what, lad? <laughs> you ever had some meat and potatoes? <laughs> In this movie, they're talking about the fish and chips. Oh my god. We are going to get cancelled <laughs> so fucking quickly. Boy! You are a nightmare. No, the, I can say I can do nothing to Irish culture that this movie does not do to itself. Except that it's made in Ireland by yes. an Irish. And I'm like kind of an Irish citizen, so I, I can do it. Actually, this movie's set in Northern Ireland, so I'm not a citizen of that. I forgot that Ireland split into two. Yes, that is. What's can you can we pause podcast? What's the history of that? I'm not <laughs> doing that. What? I am not doing the history of the troubles. What? Why? Why, Jeff? I thought you were so comfortable with offending all the Irish people no, before. Why not do it anymore now? No, Go I'm not way. worried about the offensive nature. I'm worried about the fucking time nature. That's oh. a lot of information. Okay. Yeah, it's a war between like. Protestants and the Catholics, the UK and Native Islands, the IRA, Troubles, Good Friday um, re- meeting, or whatever. Um, yeah, that's right, folks. We're talking about a whole lot of soul, a movie you've definitely seen this week. Oh, wait. Wait a minute, Jeff. We are supposed to watch a whole lot of soul? Yeah. Did you watch I watched, Standoff? I watched a movie called Standoff. <laughs> Am yeah, I well, wrong? At the end of last week's episode on Furry Vengeance, uh, thank you that oh, um, fuck. <laughs> um we promised that we had an episode this week on a movie called standoff that is a lie <laughs> we had an episode on a movie called whole lot of soul yeah you may be confused Audie. it's like oh is jeff and stewart doing the thing again where they have to like bullshit episodes so they can get a guest or whatever no we are still covering the same movie it's just under a different title yes it was renamed standoff for the north america dvd release yes because this movie made no money <laughs> Um, and basically only got, like, the only way they can make money is to put out a DVD with Brendan Fraser that said standoff. And it probably still didn't make any money. Yeah. Um, so, um, checking in with Brendan. Do we? <laughs> uh, we just had Furry Vengeance. Before that Extraordinary Measures. Yeah, and he's really in the, like, he he's, you know taking roles not because he's necessarily interested but more so for the you know he, he he's got to work yeah and this movie is kind of weird because i think he does kind of do this for some level of clout really yeah not like in a major way but this movie is the director of this movie is uh terry george who's a man of some repute in Hollywood. Yeah, mostly screenwriting. Yeah, so um, Terry George, um, he mostly does movies about the Troubles in Northern Ireland. Like, a lot of his movies are about um, the that period of, t- of Irish history. Yeah. Um, he When he was a kid, he was actually involved in, like, the armed militias, and he spent multiple years in prison. Oh, shit. Um, for that. But he later, you know, goes on and his first movie is he's the writer of In the Name of the Father, which is a Daniel Day-Lewis, Pete Postlewaite um, drama. It's very good. Uh, he gets an Oscar nomination for that. And he also directs the second unit. Um, I don't believe he won for that. He did not win for that, but he was nominated for an Oscar. Off of that, he goes right into, you know, he directs and he writes at the same time. Um, some movies. He, yeah. 
First movie is a Helen Mirren movie called Some Mother's Son, which is also another movie about the Troubles. Uh, he does The Boxer, which he also writes. It's another movie about the IRA with Daniel Day-Lewis, their follow-up to In the Name of the Father. He writes a movie called Hearts War. That's funny. Uh, Hearts War is a movie that was stars Colin Farrell and was recently covered by the Above the Line podcast uh, hosted by Cole Bradley, um, right. previous guest of the show. I can't believe. Do you think he does that for us? Do you think he does that for us? No. Yeah, no. So why are we doing it for him? <laughs> He's a competitor, Jeff. Learn to compete. <laughs> yeah. Fuck's sake. Um, but he, and then his next director movie after Some Other Son is he directs Hotel Rwanda. A wildly successful movie. Yes. Critically. A crit, it makes like double its budget. Gets It makes in, double its budget off of like a $15 yeah, million dollar gets, budget. It doesn't Im- go crazy. Incredibly, um, well, you know, what do you call it? Like optimistic, incredible reviews. Yeah. Nominated for best three, actor, nominated, supporting yeah, actor, screenplay. Three Oscars, including yeah. his screenplay. Yeah. And so he kind of just becomes like a respected director off of this. Yeah. His next movie is Reservation Road um, with Joaquin Phoenix and Mark Ruffalo. Have not seen that movie. It doesn't really do anything. Um, it looks like it's kind of like his prestige follow up. Um, makes and, two million. Yeah, it doesn't do anything. No one sees it. After that, he follows that up and he makes a short film called The Shore, uh, starring Kiara and Hines, and wins the best Oscar and wins the Oscar for best and live action short film. Yeah, for his short, The Shore. And it, you know what? And it's a uh, also another movie about the troubles yeah. between Ireland and Northern it's Ireland. It's an Irish short film, and he wins the Oscar. Yeah. And this is his follow-up to winning an Oscar, having been nominated two times before. Yeah. Is he makes this movie. Whole lot of soul. And I just want to know, Terry, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> what did happen? Like, honest to God. This is ostensibly a criminal comedy film. Um, that takes place in Ireland. Yeah, this is very much in the vein of, like, the 90s like british comedies that harvey weinstein would buy off a shelf yeah like your your full monty's i i love the full monty I, let, let me emphasize i love the full monty yeah but like your full monty's and your early guy richie's and whatnot this is like kind of a riff on those style of movies in 2012 in 2012 while also being a riff on dog day afternoon yeah. With like the which we've actually covered on this fucking show before with Mad City. Yeah. Um, which is the same movie as this. Pretty much. In which, you know, people are trapped inside of a storefront and the police are all outside and the movie's about the tensions growing within. Yada 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 and you know, economic troubles and blah 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 blah. Yeah. Uh, point being none of that works in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean this this uh... Jeff, I'm not going to lie to you. I watched this movie two days ago. Yes. I remember a couple things. There yeah. is a standoff, and Brendan Fraser's in this movie. Yeah. Oh, and there's an RPG involved. But that's about it. It's about all I remember in this movie. This movie makes zero sense. It's kind of boring, actually, too. Like, I don't, I don't, not a lot of the action sequences are that entertaining. Uh, there are actors in it that yeah might not they do things they do things the the they like it's such a nothing movie this movie very much feels like Terry George had a really fun idea and had been doing dramas for so long he's like I'm gonna make a comedy and he had a good and he had a good idea for one and I feel like in production very quickly it's like this ain't gonna work yeah. And so this movie kind of just gets forgotten once it's finished. Forgotten? Bro, we had to like... How did you watch this movie, Joe? So uh, I had to watch this movie um, off of like a pirate site because that's the only possible place I could find to watch this movie. This movie does not exist on any streaming platforms. I think you can buy the DVD, right? Yeah, I think you can buy the DVD. I think it's out of print. <laughs> it's out of print. I think it's out of print. Does that mean it's sold out? Uh, over time, yes. Over the last 11 10, years? Yeah, 11 years or whatever. 
that it sold out when they printed five DVDs. Yeah, they printed the five copies. <laughs> Three of them went to Terry George. <laughs> but no, this movie, like, it, it did not get released in a real way. No, it did not. It was at some film festivals and then gets released in the U.S. as standoff. And, like, it, it that's it. Yeah. It's very clear that Terry did not have... Maybe he in faith intentionally in. gutted this movie. Yeah, I think this kind of gets dumped. Yeah. Um, I think he, he kind of gives up on the movie in post. Finishes it and just shoots it out there. It feels like it. Yeah. And then the I will say, just to go back to the Terry George corner, um, that he has two movies after this that come out, but none of them are hits at all. He has one called The Promise. Yeah, The Promise may be the funniest movie ever made. Oh, um, you've seen it? I've not seen it, but I've seen enough it's of it. It's set in the final years of the Ottoman Empire with Oscar Isaac, Charlotte Le Bon, and Christian Bale. Yeah, the story of that movie is that's so saccharine. It's like crazy. Um, Premiered 2016 at the Toronto International Film Festival. It was released in the U.S. at 2017. And the problem also is that that movie also has a, a major... Um, controversy with Armenian, the Armenian genocide. Yeah. Um, and that Armenian, it's about the Armenian genocide, essentially. Yeah. But Armenian genocide deniers, like, attacked the movie online. And then he wrote, so that was one he directed and wrote. And the other one, the one that I have is that he consulted on a movie that came out in 2021 called The Night. But he's not attached as a writer, a director, or even a producer. He just yeah, consulted just like, on it. Yeah. Barely is it. So, like, really his last movie was The Promise, which came out uh, seven years ago. Yes. So it's kind of sad because it seems like, you know, this dude got his shot after the short, blew it on a whole lot of sale, and hasn't been really making any movies since. Yeah, I mean, he got a shot after Hotel Rwanda, and then, like, he just never was able to recapture his magic when he got older. Yeah. Um, do you want to just talk about Whole Lot of Soul? <sighs> Yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be quick. There's not much to say about the Can plot. I just read the Wikipedia plot? Yeah. I, it, Hoping it's to pay back some gambling debt, he owes, he owes to local mobster Mad Dog Flynn, played by yeah. David O'Hara. Yeah. Jim. David O'Hara, um, Mad Dog Flynn. I thought I recognized him. Looked him up. Remember in the la- the second to last Harry Potter movie, how they infiltrate the Ministry of Magic? Yes. He's the guy who Harry turns into. Yeah. David O'Hara has been in more stuff though than that, bro. <laughs> I've seen him in other things, it's, but yeah, I know what you mean. I do recognize that's him. That's what I recognized him from. Yeah. He's been in other stuff, but that's yeah. what I recognized him. From. Uh Jim, played by Martin McCann. Who I, Martin McCann Corner, real quick, Jeff. Martin McCann Corner. Martin McCann. Well, we're going to the Martin McCann Corner, aren't we? Fuck off with this. Martin McCann. Oh, we're in the corner now. Is uh um, you want some of me lucky charms? Mark McCann after um, fuck. Sorry, let me look at this. Uh, Mark McCann after whole lot of. Where is this fucking movie? Standoff. Oh, there it is. Standoff. Uh, Mark McCann is in a movie that came out a few years ago called The Survivalist, which I guess got like a lot of really good reviews that I might actually try to go see. You he, might uh, actually try to go see. I don't know. I read something that like he's came out eight years ago. <laughs> Where no, are you gonna go I, see? I, it? I read something that he, you know, he he's been in. A, he's actually a kind of decent actor, and he was in like some better yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah I'm sure movie. he's fine. No one in this movie gets an opportunity to be a good actor. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, Jim robs the local fishmongers. Only to discover that it's Which, actually a front for the mobster business that yeah. he owes money to, the gambling debt. So now on the run and pursued by police detective uh, Weller, Calm Meany. Oh, they, yeah, it's me, Calm Meany, and I. Um, Calm Meany, he's in other things. He's in a lot of stuff. He pops up. Yep. Jim is cornered in an antique shop where he takes hostages. A uh, collection of, this is a weird phrasing in Wikipedia, colorful characters. Not sure how I like that. Including American Joe McGuire, played by Brendan Fraser, 
the owner who may be his illegitimate father. Yes. And his girlfriend, Sophie, uh, Yaya Da Costa. Caught between the mobsters gang and the police, the unfortunate young Jim must find a way out of this tricky situation with the help from his hostages. Ah, uh, thanks, folks. <laughs> no. Well, and then to just clear it up, like the whole thing is they find out that the bag that Jim stole from the fishmongers has evidence against the local crime boss yeah. that Mad Brennan Flynn. that Brennan Fraser negotiates with the police detective that hey we have evidence that you could use to arrest this mobster yeah. you've been after for a while if you agree to let us go or whatever the fuck yeah and it works yeah now an RPG does blow up the store but they survive <laughs> an RPG does come into this yeah it blows up the store but they survive yeah. and they have like all the trinkets yeah. and things and then the mad dog Flynn gets arrested. Brennan Fraser says goodbye to Jim. They 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 reconcile his father and yeah. son. And then the movie is over. Yeah. I want to talk about Brennan Fraser in this movie. Okay. Um his char- I don't know why his character is the way that he is in this movie. <laughs> it feels very if there's so much added shoe leather cuz the opening scene of this movie is in Boston and it's Brennan Fraser running out of a house in his underwear screaming while being chased by a woman in her underwear in her underwear and then we cut to belfast yeah um and there's like a rainbow and there's a leprechaun he's running around he gets shot by an ira member um no so brendan <laughs> what like, the fuck uh, i don't know um brendan like why is he in this movie cuz he needed the paycheck no but why is he in this movie like I, I don't know when you write this like why did terry george decide to center this movie around an american visiting ireland covering his brother's store who's out who, of town on a humanitarian mission in africa in which he his potential illegitimate son decides to take the store hostage yeah it's a very weird like setup yeah. Um, there's like so much complication in that. This movie could have been. I feel the like. The first act could have been five minutes long. This movie could have been so much simpler to set up if you just have him be an Irishman. Yeah. And like maybe he moved from another town. Yeah. Or something like that. But no, he has And he to just be... opened the store. He doesn't have to be covering his brother's store. I don't know. There's like. There's so much added. Like, shoe leather there. That doesn't carry any value. Yeah, that just adds complication that we don't need. Yeah. And, like, Fraser is so mismatched for this. Yeah, this screams like he should. it should have been Colin Farrell. Yeah, this should have been, a, like, bless his heart, and he hope he doesn't have to do this movie, but this should be Colin Farrell. It shouldn't be fucking Brendan Fraser. Yeah. Um. Maybe they tried to get Colin Farrell, and... He's like, ha! I'm he not wa- doing that. He wasn't available. <laughs> um... But, like, Brendan, it's just really weird. He doesn't fit because he's not Irish. Yeah. He doesn't fit because, like, obviously he doesn't fit. And then, like, every scene, people just come up and be like, Oi, how you doing? He's like, no, I don't want to buy the couch. <laughs> yeah, he has such a thick American accent, too. Like, yeah. He's not even trying to, like, introduce a little like, bit of I don't Irish. understand the value in the slightest of making his character American and then casting Brendan in that role. You're not going to find any fight from me, pal. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> but then also making him ostensibly the lead of this movie adds so much complication. Kind of, yeah. You could cut his character out. You could. Um, or make him, like, a heavy supporting character because the main character of this movie is Jim. It's sh- supposed to be. Yeah, but we never learn anything about him. We learn he has a wife and a son, and he needs to steal $5,000 to pay off a gambler. And his dad left him when he was young, and it's probably Brendan Fraser. Because Jim knew about it. Yeah. Jim knows that Brendan Fraser is his dad. Yeah. How? It's never explained. No. Uh, so this whole movie just kind of falls apart right away, because I don't understand the relationships. And this movie looks cheap. Very. This movie looks season one Doctor Who. Yeah. It is, the, <laughs> this movie does not look like it was, you know, directed by someone who had won an Academy Award. Yeah. Uh, it's very basic compositions, very basic lighting, shot design. It's just, this whole thing perplexes me. 
That's why I'm so confused by this movie. I'm confused by it too, bro. I I mm. I'm nothing really to say. Yeah. Like I wish I could just very easily say like, oh, this is like you know a late stage Travolta movie. It's just like you know, a cheap indie crime action movie, like a uh, Criminal Activities or something. But it's attempted but to I be can't. more it's than that. <laughs> like it's directed by a real guy. Yeah. Um, it's like trying to be. I don't even know what it's trying to say. I don't either. Like I'm sorry. I wish. I yeah. Had more, I wish I had. I wish I had more I to say. I yeah. just. I don't. I really don't. I. I read it's for just, you guys what the plot yeah, was. It's just and... overall very confusing that that's. I think like at a. It, it's just like. They get. Yeah, I don't like. I can't even formulate thoughts about this movie, and that's not you know because the movie's like the worst thing I've ever seen. I actually enjoyed parts of this movie. You did. Yeah, I think that all the Irish humor is funny. Like when it's like the two Irish cops and they go to like the the fish and chips place and they're like, "This is all you need in life. You got your omega three fatty oils, you got your you got your carbohydrates, your meat. You put it all in and it costs three. It costs a quid fifty. <laughs> like I think that's pretty good. Like he's just talking. It's funny. <laughs> Why is it funny? Because he's making he's he's like making this whole point about how fish and chips is the healthiest meal, and it's just funny to hear him like try and rationalize that. Just... And he's like, and you got to catch up on yesterday's paper. <laughs> He holds up the paper that's wrapped him. Do Irish accents just make you laugh, Jeff? Is that what we're, I'm hearing? Yeah, my grandparents have Irish had Irish accents. So and was that funny to you? All I all accents are funny to me. <laughs> um, that is simply the rule of nature. <laughs> um, what what'd you do? I dropped something. Okay. <laughs> Jeff, uh, I'm really sorry. I, yeah, I, I, want, I have I, nothing else to say. I want to go through some some quick notes in this okay. movie. Um, I, I wrote a movie star should not be doing this. This is before I knew this is like directed by a real guy and all that fun stuff. Um, I like that this whole thing is centered around a fish market named Whole Lot of Soul. I don't quite know why it's called that. Yeah, is it soul type of fish? You're asking me. <laughs> I'm asking you. Yes. Okay, a soul is a fish. It's a weird looking fish. Stuart, look at this. This is what a soul looks like. Look at this guy. Weird. That is a weird looking fish. It's a weird fish. Uh, stop what you're doing right now. Yeah. Pull out your phone. Yeah. And look up oh, soul you're, fish. You're talking to the I'm audience. I'm telling the audience to okay. look up soul fish. Soul fish. Fat guy. Uh, so I guess they sell a lot of those fish at this market. A whole lot of soul. Um, but also the characters discover they have a whole lot of soul or some bullshit. This is why Terry George should not have done this movie, or at least yeah. not have done this version of this movie. Yeah. Because I can already hear that he's trying to put in more... I can feel as much... I'm putting more effort in trying to figure this movie out than Terry George put into making this movie. This is a very slapdash production. Um, yeah. There's one good scene where there's like an old man with dementia, and they get his car keys by telling him they're going out on an IRA raid. <laughs> I like that. Uh, weird cameos in this movie. Um, Conleth Hall shows up at one point, uh, who plays Varys on Game of Thrones. He shows up and he's like just like the the nebbishy Irish guy across the street who's just like, oh yeah, you know, I've been watching this guy. I've been watching, you know, this kid went in the door and he had a pram and he had a gun and they're firing a lot of guns out the door. Aren't they? And I'm like, I was like, all right, Conleth Hall showing up and he never reappears. Um, Tom Hollander, um, Cutler Beckett from Pirates of the Caribbean shows up for one scene as the defense minister of Britain, and then he just leaves. He like shows up to this little street and then leaves. It's like clear that he's Terry's trying to do this ostentatious comedy with this idea. Yeah. Um, you know, you're like Dog Day Afternoon where things keep escalating against the wishes of the people inside. It doesn't really escalate, though. Yeah, it doesn't escalate until the RPG comes. No, out, so because right? everyone every time it escalates, the people show up and then they leave right away. Yeah. Um, which brings me to my main problem with this movie at the end. They just let them all go. Yeah, they do. Like because the the reveal this information about Mad Dog, whatever the fuck his name is. Right. They they give the cops what they wanted. Yeah. And when they thought that it all went away. In the RPG explosion, they found out that the kids took them. They take kids hostage, I guess. Yeah, by accident. So, yeah, they give that to the detective, and the detective lets them all go. 
Yeah, it's it's all so weird. I'm not disagree. <laughs> yeah. That's all I gotta say. Okay. That's all I gotta say. Um very weird movie. I don't know why Brendan's in this. I mean I know why he's in it, but Yeah, and then you know, this movie just comes out. It doesn't though. Yeah, it comes out, no one sees it, it makes no money. Um, and that that's that's it. <laughs> this is a very exciting episode for you guys, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, but let's say it's like sub like like all those when late stage Travolta movies, there's a lot of like fun funny context to them. There's nothing with this. There's no funny context. There's no interesting context. It's just a movie that doesn't work. It comes out and it doesn't work. And you know, before this, we had covered uh, Furry Vengeance, and then after this, it's gonna be. Um, yeah, our next movie is Escape from Planet Earth. Yeah, Escape from Planet Earth. So, um, that I mean, if anything, this should tell you what he's doing yeah. with his career. Maybe it's a maybe it's worth saying that like he's doing like essentially like one movie a year at this point. Yeah. He's doing like, he, he, he really went, ramps it up in the next year. He does. He, well, I'm, we go from like, he did three to four movies in 2008, 2009. So he does two movies, in 2010. Uh, one, this is the only movie that comes out in 2011 that has his name on it. Yeah. One in 2012, one that has his name on it in 2012. And, and then, then it's five in 2013 that are all, low budget just yeah dumpsters nothing which probably all were shot within a month yeah and then just one movie in 2014 and then he's not in a movie again for five years wow the nut job gonna be a really big episode <laughs> <laughs> we about to talk a lot about the nut job be like what happened <laughs> this makes him stop making movies for five years well, no, he, he definitely recorded the nut job before some of the other movies we're going to talk about okay um still the nut job, a movie we will be discussing on this show. Um, but yeah, that's that's our episode on a whole lot of soul. I think that's it. Okay. Uh, thank you folks so much for listening. Please remember to rate, review, and subscribe on whatever platform you're listening on. Um, please remember to tune in next week for our episode on Escape from Planet Earth. Pop on our Reddit, r slash Travolting. Find us on Twitter, Instagram at Travolting Pod, Travolting Podcast at gmail.com. Find me on Twitter at Jeff W. Sweeney. Narg. <laughs> when Stuart doesn't like a movie, he just goes narg. <laughs> so thanks to Rebecca Johnson for the graphic design, Michael Van Bodegum Smith for the